Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of GGRC. C C C C. So, I thought it was uh, important that we talk about the Nintendo Switch. Now, we've known what it is for the past few months, which is important. It's important to know uh, what the system is going to be before you purchase it, right? Uh, Nintendo's been very elusive about it for a while now, and... Uh, you know, when it finally was uh, shown off a couple months ago in a video, it was it was pretty exciting, but everybody else was doing a lot of digging on it, there was a lot of leaks coming out here and there, and, and I, you know, I didn't really feel comfortable talking about it yet, because I wasn't, I didn't really have an opinion yet. I mean, it, I thought it looked cool, I loved the idea of uh, a home console also being portable at the same time, but we just didn't know enough about it to really make a decision on, you know, whether this is going to be something I want to get right off the bat or something I'm going to wait for or something I'm going to get at all, or really what Nintendo's direction was with it. So now that we just had Nintendo's official, uh, I guess you want to call it Tokyo live stream last night, and they had a nice three or four hour treehouse presentation today showing off a lot of the software, I thought it was finally a good time to, go, uh, to give off my Nintendo Switch reactions. The system is going to be about 300 bucks. Now, I saw a lot of people in chat last night while the live stream was going. They were pretty upset about this because so many uh, publications and, and websites and, and blogs and everything sort of attested to the fact that the system's probably going to be about 250. Now, when the grand scheme of things is only another 50 bucks for a lot of us, uh, but for uh, you know the other lot of us, I guess 50 dollars is a lot of money, and that makes sense. But Gaming has always been somewhat of an expensive hobby. I mean, games are 60 bucks a pop, right? But you gotta remember, this is a brand new system. Now, I'm, I'm not really defending the fact that it's more expensive, but I mean, the difference between 250 and 300, at least to me, really, I mean, it doesn't really bear too much of, like, me getting angry at them for it. Um, what I do think is weird, though, is that they don't have a 250 version and then a 300 version that comes with the game. It's it's only coming out at 300 bucks, and there's no pack-in game, uh, pack game. So... What's up with that? I mean, they showed off a couple of games that looked really cool, like ARMS and 1-2 Switch and whatnot, that, that would be really good for multiplayer. Sort of like the, the Wii Sports equivalent for now, but there's there's no packing game. Now, if there is one, they haven't mentioned it, but I assume this is it. Like, pre-orders have gone live today. They've already announced a lot of the software that's coming out. If there was going to be a packing game, they would have mentioned it, so no packing. Now, even though there's no packing game, um, you're still going to get a lot of stuff in that $300 box, though. You're going to get the system, you're going to get the dock, uh, you're going to get the uh, HDMI cord, I guess that connects the dock to the TV. You are going to get an AC adapter that will charge the system, uh, which I guess you can use on the go as well, so that way when you pick the thing up and take it with you, you can still charge it wherever you're at. Uh, it's going to come with the two Joy-Cons, left and the right. It's going to come with the Joy-Con controller holder thing, you can snap it into it and, you know, use it as like a regular controller. And I think that about covers everything that's that's coming into it. So if you want a game, you gotta buy that separately, but it's coming with a ton of stuff in the box. I still gotta say, coming back to it, I think the pack-in thing is still a little... It's a little weird. There, there should have been a small game included with it, even if it was right on the system. Something that sort of was a proof of concept, I guess, for the system itself. A lot of the games that they were showing were really cool. Um, one game that comes to mind immediately was ARMS. Now, ARMS is, is a pretty fun looking game where everybody plays as like this like futuristic boxer type person, right? And in it, um, use the Joy-Cons in each hand to punch, and you're punching across an arena to hit this other guy, and then you're using the motion of the Joy-Cons like you would with a, a, a Wii remote, and uh, that makes you go left, right, and jump, and all that stuff. So, proof of concept right there. And why this game isn't just included with the system, I don't understand. Or 1-2-Switch for that matter. 1-2-Switch seems like the, I guess this was more like the WarioWare that uh, Wii U had. Um, even though a lot of the Wii U's came with a Nintendo Land, uh, WarioWare I think ended up being more of a favorite for a lot of people with a lot more minigames that people actually liked. So you got 1-2-Switch um, here. Seems like it would have been a great fit to be a pack-in or a pre-installed game on the system, but... I don't know, I'm not really sure what they're thinking on that. Considering that you could play multiplayer with the system out of the box with two controllers, yet you don't have a multiplayer game, just seems really weird. And of course, one of the other things that people are a little upset about is the battery life for the system. Now, 
A lot of people always claim the lower number of something to, you know, I guess make their point on something negative to prove that this, whatever they're talking about, whether it's a Nintendo system or, you know, the amount of pickles on a sandwich that they got, <laughs> whatever it is, they're going to go with the lowest number. So Nintendo touted that the, uh, the Nintendo Switch console, when it's not connected to the dock, is going to run for about three to six hours. Now, six hours, and it said depending on game, six hours is probably for like if you're playing a game like Picross or something like that. Something easy, something simple like Tetris, you know, that kind of thing. And then it said three hours, you know, probably for other games, like if you're playing Legend of Zelda for three hours straight on this thing, that it's going to drain the battery because it's more graphic intensive. It, at least to me, that makes sense. I mean, it's the same way, you know, that your 3DS works. If you have a 3DS or even a PS Vita, um, if you're playing with these machines and you're playing like simple little puzzle games, the battery's not going to go down. I mean, you could put that thing in sleep mode for forever if you're running a, a puzzle game in the background. But in the background, if you're running some kind of like really, uh, really graphic intensive game and then opening it up and playing it every now and then and then closing it again, of course the battery is going to drain more. It's just common sense, you know, for anybody who has that kind of knowledge on technology. But I don't know, three to six hours, like six hours, like if it was like six to eight hours, I would have been like, oh, wow, okay, that's more than I expected. But three to six, I don't know, you, you got to figure the average of that is going to be about, you know, four to five, four and a half and somewhere in that region. And if you're taking a long flight that day uh, and you plan to play this on the airplane like they show in their first uh, presentation video, that kind of puts a damper on things, doesn't it? I mean, you, you, you're on the plane with it and all of a sudden it goes out on you and, and you're like, I've only been playing this for a couple hours now. You get to the airport, you got to immediately plug it in so you don't lose your save and everything. I don't know. I can see why people could get upset about this and I, I can't disagree with them. Um, so I guess if you're on a plane, make sure you're playing Tetris or something like that. Don't play Zelda. Or if you're going to play Zelda, maybe play an hour of it because it seems like that battery is just going to go... Pew. But the thing that people seem to be most angry about, at least uh, and this is the thing that I can most identify people's anger with, is the fact that Nintendo is going to be introducing a paid online service for the Switch. Now, this is weird because, you know, this all started with Xbox Live and then PSN finally jumped on it with the PS4 and everything. And now Nintendo's doing it. So if you're going to be, if you plan to be playing online with any of these games, whether it's Mario Kart 8 or, you know, whether it's, I mean, what else is coming up that actually has online play? I, I really don't know. But whatever any of these games are, if you plan to play online with friends or whatever, you're going to have to pay some kind of a, a surcharge for that. And rightly so, I can see why people are pretty upset about that. But, you know, considering the way this system looks, it looks like they're sort of nickel and diming a, a lot of different things with this system. You know, the controllers, if you want a new pack of the, the Joy-Cons or whatever, say you want to play that ARMS game, you know, you, you get the two for you. But if you want to play local multiplayer with somebody else, you have to buy another set of the, those Joy-Con controllers. I think that's 80 bucks. So you're getting two controllers, one for each hand, but really, you know, in, in the human mind, you're thinking like, well, really, it's one controller. Like, if you're playing Bomberman, that's one controller. It might be two controllers if you're playing ARMS, but I don't know. 80 bucks for a controller, man, that just seems like really, really high. And paying for online play next to all these other items that they have available for the system, I, I don't know. It, it, it seems expensive to me. Nintendo also showed off that they're going to have eight player local multiplayer, which is kind of interesting. Um, by local multiplayer, they don't mean like, hey, uh, everybody bring like one Wiimote, you know, that's not too expensive and everybody can play. No, this is going to be like, everybody's got to bring their, <laughs> their full uh, Nintendo Switch system with the Joy-Cons attached to it. So if, you know, if, if we're playing Mario Kart, we can all play Mario Kart together, but we're all doing this, you know? It's not much different than doing it with a 3DS or whatever, but it just seemed a little odd to me, you know? Um, the other thing, too, is that the base system is only going to come with 32 gigs of storage uh, right off the bat, and you can expand that with a micro SD card, I guess, so you're going to have to invest some money if you want to expand the storage on that, but that's another thing that you're going to have to fork out a little bit of cash for. Now, of course, with any launch of any console, the game selection is going to be small. Now, this seems especially true for the Switch. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of games they're committing to having on launch, except for the new Zelda game. The new Zelda game looks like it's going to be big enough to sustain you for a while, you know, until something new comes out. Then it looks like that ARMS game that we were talking about, the boxing one, is going to come out shortly after that. 
Um, Splatoon 2 is coming out this summer. And the new Super Mario Odyssey is coming out this holiday, along with a new Fire Emblem game called Fire Emblem Warriors. Now, all of these games look cool, uh, save for uh, Fire Emblem, because they didn't really show anything of Fire Emblem. But I guess Fire Emblem Warriors is getting its own, you know, Nintendo Direct thing next week. So they're going to show that off, uh, hopefully, next week, at least some gameplay and whatnot. And it's, hopefully it's not just like a 12-minute, like, here's story and here's what we're aiming to do with it. Hopefully, they're, since it's coming out at the end of the year here that they got more to show for it. So Now they also showed Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, this is basically the same game, but with a few added features and, and courses and that kind of thing. They're, they're adding, you know, the undead Dry Bowser, they're adding Dry Bones, uh, they're adding King Boo, they added uh, the two Splatoon Inkling kids, the, the boy and the girl. Um, and of course they're including all the DLC that was in the game before. The other thing that I saw in the treehouse that they weren't able to uh, talk about during the trailer is that they've sort of revamped a lot of the battle mode of Mario Kart 8. Now that was the one thing about Mario Kart 8 that absolutely sucked was the battle mode. I, I didn't play hardly any of it because they took battle mode and put it on a bunch of regular racing tracks and it's like no 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 no. no battle mode is about having a one square area of a of a track you know with uh, areas you know, and puzzle boxes that you can pick up uh, in the areas that you can climb up to or, you know, ramps you can go up and that kind of thing to avoid getting hit by turtle shells and every other thing. It looks like they've fixed that to an extent. They've even added a new mode, I think it's called Bomb Blast, where characters constantly have bombs that they're just, like, lobbing at each other, which looks like a ton of fun. So, I think, uh, I think that's going to be a, a good one to pick up if you haven't played Mario Kart in a while. Um, and for me personally, I love Mario Kart 8, so... This may not be a day one purchase for me, but as soon as there's some kind of a little sale, like if it drops 20 bucks or something like that, it's definitely going to be mine. They did show that EA is working on FIFA as well. Uh, FIFA's never been a series that I really care about. I'm not really much of a sports game fan myself anyway, but it's great to see that there are uh, third-party developers creating games for this. Let's see, they did have uh, one from Atlas. What was the name of it? It had a very strange name. It was like... Octo... Octo something Traveler? Octopath Traveler, that was the name of it. Weird, weird name. It kind of looks like uh, an old Final Fantasy 1 or 2 game where the characters are on one side and the monsters are on the other side and they're, they're fighting back and forth. They're little sprites, but they, everything on it just looks beautiful and it's on a 3 platform or whatever. You gotta check it out to, to really understand it, but it, it looks interesting. I don't know. Kind of weird. It is an Atlas game, so if you're into the, the Atlas games and RPGs, it's gonna be right up your alley. Um, they also announced that there's going to be Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2 sort of packed in together as one, which I, I think is great because I feel like I'm one of five people who actually liked Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U. So if that ends up getting a re-release on the Switch, I'll actually be really excited for that because the Wii U, well, the game looked fine. It, you know, had a lot of stuttering and, and frame rate issues at, at times, so it'd be nice to play on a system where there's none of that and it runs at a perfect 60 frames per second all the time. So Capcom also showed off like a Street Fighter 2, what is it called? Street Fighter 2 Ultra, I think. Looks like pretty much the exact same game, except they added uh, Evil Ryu and <laughs> another character called Violent Ken. So anybody who's a fan of Street Fighter is probably going to be really into that. But again, it's just Street Fighter 2. And I played a shitload of Street Fighter 2 back on the Sega Genesis, you know, back in the 90s. But it's to the point where, like, if I see that game in an arcade or something, I'll pop in a couple of quarters and play a few rounds, but I don't know if it's a game I really want to pay, you know, 20 or 30 bucks for just to own again, you know? Like, Street Fighter's great, but it's just, like, another port. Um, Skyrim, okay. I did forget another third party, but Skyrim, again, is just, like, another older game. It's another port. Like, I played through Skyrim on my PC, and while it's a great game, I don't really have any desire to play through it again. Now... This is a great game to get for people who haven't played through the game yet, so if you're getting a Nintendo Switch for your family and, you know, you're, this is the first system your kids are going to have and whatnot, and they're going to get a chance to play some Skyrim, I think it's a perfect fit. But for the person who's already played the game, at least for me, I'm not a diehard Skyrim fan, I know a lot of other people are, it's probably going to be a pass for me. Other third-party games that they had covered were, let's see, Minecraft, they're going to have the new Sonic game out on it, what was it called, Sonic Mania or something like that? I don't know. And then uh, they're also going to have a new Bomberman game. Now, I, I got to see a little of all these games during the uh, Treehouse presentation, and they're pretty much what you would expect. I mean, Minecraft is Minecraft. Sonic Mania, or, or whatever the hell it's called, the new Sonic, it's Sonic 2 and 3 or whatever put together as a, a new HD version of Sonic. Yeah, fine, great, I like Sonic, cool. Uh, the new Bomberman just looks like a new Bomberman, you know? 
a lot of these games are the they sort of seem like they're just sort uh, sort of filling the gap, I guess, for third party. Like there, there's no third party games that they showed that were just like hell yeah. Except for one. <laughs> the one I did not mention yet was the new Xenoblade. They have a Xenoblade 2 coming out. Now, this of course is a huge deal. Now, Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U was a, was a great game. And now they have Xenoblade 2 coming out on the Nintendo Switch. This seems like a, a match, you know, made in, in whatever uh, ethereal place, heaven or where, whatever you believe in that's a good place. But it seems like a great match, because if that game is able to come out this year, which I doubt it because they did not give it a release date, I'm assuming it's going to be 2018, but whenever that comes out, that's going to be a big system seller. Um, at least you would think. I don't know how well Xenoblade actually sold on the Wii U. I would like to think it did well. But you never know nowadays. Sometimes these games, they come out, and you're not so sure if they're actually going to, you know, do what you think they're going to do, or if they're going to be as uh, important as you think they're going to be, you know? All right, well, we've, we've gone on long enough here. You know, the, the ultimate question here is, is this something I'm going to pre-order? Is this something that I'm going to get day one? I can honestly say that today I did pre-order the Nintendo Switch uh, based on Zelda, and I really want to play the new Zelda. I, I don't see good things in the future for Zelda on the Wii U, considering at the presentation I know that it was completely Switch-oriented, but they didn't even mention a release date for it on the Wii U, so it almost seems like they're canceling it. Um, and if they're not canceling it, you know, they're completely ignoring the Wii U audience in every way, shape, and form right now. So, I really want to play that game. Um, so I did pre-order a system, but the, the good thing about it here is that even though, like, the release is super close, it's only seven weeks away from uh, today, even though the release is super close, I have all this time to think about it and cancel it if I don't want it, because I have one locked in. So if anything happens, if anything changes, if they announce something new that I'm just I just don't agree with, I can cancel it. And I'm not afraid to because this day and age I play most of my games on my PC anyway. My Nintendo console has become the console that I just play my Nintendo games on. When Mario Odyssey comes out, I want to make sure I'm covered for a new Mario game. You know, when Fire Emblem comes out on it, I want to play the new Fire Emblem. And, you know, when Zelda comes out in March, I really would like to be there to play that as well. But if it doesn't work out, then, you know, so be it. But, um, you know, I, I'm really interested to see what's going to go on with the Switch in the future here. And I'm, I'm really interested to see, uh, you know, what they plan to do with it uh, in 2018. 2017, obviously, is the launch year. The launch year is exciting just because of the launch. But it's, it's how companies, you know, treat their systems as years go on that, that really dictates whether a system is not only successful, but actually, like, worth having. And I think that's really uh, the hard part about early adopting anything. So, it's it's a tough call. Like I said, I got one pre-ordered. Not sure if I'm going to keep it yet. I really want to play Zelda, but, you know, we'll, we'll see here. So, I'm not sure if any of this actually helped you guys decide what you're going to do. Um, not sure if any of you are actually excited about getting a Switch. I, I know I'm excited about the system, I just wish that there were a few minor things changed here and there. Mainly, I wish there was a pack-in game. Mainly, I wish you didn't have to pay for online play. But I guess that's just the time we live in. You know, most uh, systems don't come in with a, with a pack-in game nowadays, even though it could be argued, even though the PS4 and the Xbox One have been out a few years and they can release new SKUs of systems, you know, those are packing in games. and. I'm sure by holiday 2018, Nintendo will have a new SKU for the Switch with a pack-in game. It's just disheartening that launch consoles nowadays don't come with games, and I'm sure people have been saying this for years and years, but it still is a little irritating. Um, but yeah, there's a few things in there that I, I'm really excited for, a few things I'm not so excited for, but tell me what you think. You know, leave, leave me a comment here and let me know if you guys are even looking at this thing or, or what you think about it from what you have seen. And I will see you all next time on GGRC. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to check out some of the other GGRC episodes. And if you're feeling a little retro, why not jump into the Quake Grave, where you can watch me play through a lot of different custom maps in Quake. Enjoy!